The second part of our Meaningful Movement series here with Dr. Holiday at uh, Winnipeg Sport and Spine Therapy. I just heard the phone, I got distracted. So, we... <laughs> so yeah, what we'll be doing today is we're going to be talking about the benefits of joint distraction. Okay, so what is joint distraction? Pretty much you're going to see a lot of people on social media putting bands around their hips, around their ankles, and basically we're going to talk about why you do this, how you do it, and some of the benefits. We're going to talk about basically and the squat pattern and how these bands might be able to help your mobility in the squat pattern. Yeah. So with uh, with joint distraction, there's a lot of reasons why people are doing joint distraction. First of all, we want to assess why you might need it. Could be due to an old injury. We could have had an old fracture. We could just have some soft tissue tightness. Uh, there's lots of reasons of why we would want to do a joint distraction test or um, mobility. Uh, but we first of all want to assess. We can do a self-assessment, and we also if you are seeing a qualified practitioner, maybe they're doing some testing on you and saying, okay, there's a limitation in hip internal rotation. We're gonna go through all those types of, uh, of tests here today just to show you what we what we mean and, and how we can use some of these uh, tests ourselves. That's right, so what exactly, like in joint distraction, what is actually happening, like on top of So, let's take the, the ankle for starters because it's probably one of the easiest ones to do. Uh, we, we have two bones that come down the leg and they sit into the, the front of the ankle. There's a big bone there called the talus, top ankle bone. Uh, what can happen sometimes is that ankle is just going to feel like it's tight, it's kind of jammed up. Again, if that's from an old injury, someone with recurrent ankle sprains, uh, even some shin splints, anything like that, anything that's caused maybe some, some myofascial or some ligament and tendon injury down into the foot and ankle, we sometimes lose that ability for the foot to, for the shin to move forward across the foot. So a real simple test for that is just a quick ankle dorsiflexion test. Uh, so let's do that one first. So we'll, for sure, yeah. yeah. So, what, so what we're doing is very important because before you decide, am I going to use any of these things we're going to show you today, it's important to do a test and a retest because when you walk in any given day, right, yeah. you're going to feel something different. So to determine what you need to do for your walk, it's important to do, an, like, do an assessment about how mobile you are first off. So what we're going to do is this ankle test, and this is something that you might want to do every time you want to, we do a squat day, how do I warm up, what do I do? If you do the regular thing all the time, it might not be specific enough to exactly the condition that you're in on that day, right? So this test retest will vary. I mean, if you've been sitting for a long time in a flex position, your ankle might not have so much mobility that day, as opposed to if you have been doing mobility work on a regular basis, right? So the test retest is important, and we're going to show you the ankle one here right now. So down in a, in a kneeling position, we want the toes about five inches away from the wall, okay? And what we want to do is we want to push this this big shin bone, the tibia, we want to go forward into this dorsiflexor to see if the knee can get close to the wall there. We want the knee to shoot past the toes and see just how close we can get that. The heel stays on the ground here. Good. And, you know, we're pretty close. We just sort of estimated the five inches there. But he probably could have a little more dorsiflexion there if we tried. Uh, is that a soft tissue tightness? It's not always just a calf tightness. Lots of people will say that their calves are feeling really tight. But what's happening a lot of times in the front of the ankle joint is this bone here. These two bones are coming down and it's just jamming together there and limiting the ability of these bones to slide back and allow that ankle to move and allow that shin to move forward and the ankle backwards like that. Good. And if we actually, we can probably just improve this a little bit even just with repetition here. Good. And that heel's still staying on the foot. So there's the first test for ankle dorsiflexion. Um, we would do both sides, of course. We want to see if they're even. The big thing we want to consider here is, is symmetry. So again, we'll go roughly about five inches. Perfect. Good. And we keep that heel on the floor. Probably pretty close to where the other one started out. And actually, if we take them back. Do you feel any tightness or any pain anywhere? No. On the other side, there's definitely tightness on the lateral side. But okay. So on, from this angle, what we might want to ask the, the, the person or even consider yourself is, is there tightness in the lower calf here, right? Anywhere from sort of the mid belly down? Are you feeling a sharp pain, a pinch? We could have a bone spur on the talus inside here. We can definitely have some tension through the soft tissues here. Um, and it's just that gliding motion that has to happen as those two bones roll forward. So lots of times there is some mobility there. We could even have a restriction there and they might not feel, you don't necessarily have to feel any pain. You just feel like it doesn't want to go any further, okay? So that translates into uh, another test that I like to do, and that's just the squat test. So let's stand up and do a squat test here. So the cue for the squat test would be, so just face me. We'll go feet shoulder width apart. Good. 
I'm going to have you put your arms straight out in front for this. You're just going to go down into a full squat as far as you can. Try and leave your heels on the floor. Good. And then come back up. Go again. So here we're looking for that dorsiflexion of the ankle. He has a pretty good dorsiflexion here. Again, comparing this to the test, go back up for a second. Comparing this to the test he did against the wall, he was getting much more translation of the knee forward, but we're also considering that he's lowering his body weight here. So we're gonna do that one again. Uh, another thing that we look for, this is a bit of a, a side, you know, maybe the next episode. For sure, yeah. So go ahead into your squat again. There's lots of things to consider with the squat. One main thing would be, you know, is his torso parallel with his shins here? And he's doing a really good job of that, actually. So, um, and then we have this external rotation of the hip. So come on back up, and then I'm going to have you face the camera. So his dorsiflexion was pretty decent on the squat there. Did you feel anything in that? Just tight outside the, on the left side of the quad, but on the other side from that. Okay. So let's do that squat again. We're going to do it face on. So we're going to go right up to the hip. So we're going to come back to all these distractions here, but we're just going to talk about the assessments first. So now when we go into assessing um, the hip, we're gonna go into that full deep squat again. We wanna see what happens with the hips here. So we're gonna watch, go ahead. So he's getting some external rotation of the hips. This is turning out a little bit in through this position. Do you feel anything deep in the hips in the front? In the no, nothing in the hips at all. So come on back up there. So pretty good uh, test for hip and ankle function, just a real basic screening for, the, for those. Uh, let's go into a room and just try a couple passive tests. Okay. Come on in. Come on in. So have a seat. Just slide back a little bit. So now when we talk about the hip, we're gonna we're gonna jump around here a little bit. We're gonna talk about the hip. So the hip has to have a certain degree of internal and external rotation. When we talk about the hip, we want to do an active test here as well. So we want to see if you can actually actively internally rotate the thigh, right, and what that angle is. Okay. We need to be able to get anywhere close to 45 degrees of that internal rotation of that hip. And then now we compare sides. So come back here a second. Good. And then do that one again. Do those feel pretty even and symmetrical to you? No. This one has, easy. Easy. This one has a lot more. This one's easier. This one's tight, yeah. So symmetry, again, is, is one of the big keys here with that. We want to make sure that we have equal movement on both sides. The other test one that would be some external rotation. So we want to be able to turn the leg out. And again, that 45 degree range. So we should have about 90 degrees of the hip, external rotation and internal rotation. And then we'll do this side. And again, I'm going to say he's probably a little bit tighter on the external rotation. So that left hip appears to be just reduced on both, both tests. Um, this is an active test, a passive test that I like to use. I'm going to have you slide back up onto your back if that's okay. Can, we, uh, can you see good, Chad? Yep. So, we're going to take his thigh up to 90 degrees, and we're going to go into our external rotation. Good. And then we're going to go to our internal rotation. And this is a position here, this internal rotation in this passive position, now with the hip flex to 90 degrees, sometimes we'll get some tightness in here, we'll feel a pinching in that part of the hip. There's a couple reasons. It could be some impingement of the hip capsule, it could be some soft tissue tightness in there. We've got hip flexor muscles in there. Um, we've so if we've had an old injury to this hip as well, that could be coming back to bother us a little bit too. So that side's nice and nice and easy. So then we're going to go to his left side again. Relax that for me. So in this position, he definitely has better external rotation. But his internal rotation, maybe if you want to go to the end of the table here. So when we look at his angle here, he's got a nice angle of external rotation. When we go to that internal rotation, relax your hip and thigh as much as you can. So he is relaxed, but you can see that that... So there's his left internal rotation, and then there's the right internal rotation. So there's a significant difference there and asymmetry there. So we might have to address uh, a little bit of banded distraction on that inside of the hip and thigh and see what's going on and see if we can improve that, open that up. You don't feel any pinching or anything in there? No, just pinching on this side. From did you get some pinching on yeah. the external? Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. for this one here, only you feel it right here. The tip You're feeling it up on this side. side. Yeah. Okay. So are you feeling more around this bone? Yeah. Yeah, and then behind. So the ball and socket of the hip is encapsulated in a huge, just a bunch of ligaments holds everything together. That hip has such a huge range of motion. But when we, so when we go into that internally rotated position there, that ball is pushing down and trying to wind itself out. So it's probably, um, this is probably more of a soft tissue um, 
tightness, let's mm -hmm. say, for lack of a better word right now. So uh, we're gonna do a couple specific things to try and try and make that a little more mobile. Mm -hmm. sure. So come on up. So if you guys are just joining us here, we're talking about uh, how how joint distraction can help benefit your mobility. We went over a couple of testing scenarios there, some ankle dorsiflexion test, a bit, uh, internal external hip rotation. <clears throat> it's important always to make sure that you do the tests prior to doing any warm-ups, right? Because the warm-ups that you do for your training should be specific, not just for your overall program, but specific on that day. Because you're gonna feel something different every single day. It's important to understand the full state of your body so that when you're moving, you understand the context that you're moving in, right? So I mean, today we have some tightness in the ankle here, but it might not be that way tomorrow. So I might not have sure. to do the same thing, right? Okay. So that's why it's always make sure that it's gonna be specific and make sure that if we do the test, we understand how we're moving, right? So let's look at the distractions then. Okay. Let's go over here and do an ankle distraction. I think purple is probably pretty. Do you want to get a shoe on this one? Yep, yep, yeah, a shoe and a shoe on there. Sure. Yep. So when you're going to position this bend, <clears throat> and you see a lot of different positioning, what is what is the optimal position for this bend? Position on the on the shin itself. That's right. They should, be, should we be sitting on the shin? Or should we be sitting right here on the ankle bone? Sure. Well, when we look at the, the shin bones coming down here, so this is the tibia, this is the malleolus of the tibia, and this is the lateral malleolus for the for the fibula. We don't want the band way up here. Okay, that's just going to create a, more of a, a force across the shin. If we put it close down to where the ends of the bones are, then we're going to get that translation from the band. So it's going to help these two malleoli stabilize there as we push forward and that talus can move. All right. So we'll post up a couple of photos of these ones too. We'll take some photos after just to describe the band placement because I mean, you might not want to watch the whole video, you might not have time, you might have missed a live one. So yeah, we'll post some pictures up there describing the best place for the band and why you want to place it there. Because yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if you're doing something, it's not going to be the most effective way. Oh, this is junk, it doesn't work, but maybe just a small little adjustment to the band placement that might make things a little more beneficial. Definitely. And again, when we're doing these banded distractions here, uh, we want to make sure that everything that we should do should be relatively pain free. We don't want to, we're not trying to hurt our tissues here. We're trying to just mobilize joints. There may be some old soft tissue injuries in there. Like I said, um, we could have had a bunch of ankle sprains. We may have had a history of, you know, a shin splints and that cause, has caused some restriction in the ankle. There's a lot of moving parts down there. Uh, a proper assessment goes a long way to get these things figured out. Um, but if we can show you just a few tools, maybe if you do these, these tests and, and assess yourself, maybe it'll just help with your mobility a little bit just to start. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah, never try to, never try to self-assess too much. If you've got a nag, an injury, pop in and see a chiropractor, physiotherapist, athletic therapist. Yeah, I mean, why not yeah. get a good assessment done? So there we go. So as you can see, we're gonna put it right over here. Medial and lateral malleoli, there. Now be careful, because you're gonna load this band with resistance, and if you're not careful, it's gonna take you back, right? So always do this with caution. Okay, so we got that position there. And then sometimes the band's gonna slide up a little bit, adjust it. And always start with a lighter band. Don't start with a heavy band because you're gonna have probably no success and yeah. likely injury, right? For sure. Start light, move up, and you don't feel too much. A couple other things to consider when you're in this lunge type of a position, this sort of split squat position. You know, we don't want to get really sloppy. We don't want to create any other injuries when we're doing these types of things. Yeah. So we don't want to be this guy sort of hunching over and just cranking on this. So again, we're really going to work on our posture here as well. So we're going to just going to stay nice and nice and tight and straight through here. Pull down on the core, and he's just going to start to lean forward a little bit there. He's trying to keep that knee in line with the way the toe is going. What do you feel as you do that? Feels good. Yep. No pain. No pain. No pain. And also one thing too, you can't see it from here, but I'm making sure that my heel is going to be staying on the ground because if I'm rocking up like this, we're kind of defeating the purpose. So you want to keep this base and try to think about that, that foot tripod, right? You got your big toe, small toe, and, and your heel. Make sure that the weight is going to be evenly distributed between those three points. Building an awareness for that during this is going to be also some good mental cueing for when you're squatting and trying to maintain even weight distribution throughout your foot. So how many times do you think we should do something like this? 15, 20 times? 
Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a, something we don't want to do enough repetitions. And again, it's not about the hold. A lot of times we'll think, okay, well, I need to crank this out, I need to stretch and hold this for a minute. That's not the case. You know, this is more about repetitions, just slowly easing it out of it. I would say a good starting point for someone would be 15 to 20 repetitions. We could certainly move up from there in a little bit. Yeah, and we've said this before, but if you're just joining in here, it's always if you're injury free. If you're injury free and you're doing these things, then that's fine. But if you have an existing injury or pre-existing condition, make sure that you have advice from doctor, chiropractor, physical therapist to make sure you're not going to be causing more harm, right? Good. All right. So now getting out of this is important because you're, you're in a loaded position here and this has quite a bit of resistance on it. So I would just say have a firm hand here, one hand here, come up and then slowly pull back like that. So you avoid the slingshot, right? So normally we would do both ankles, right? Like Dr. Holiday said, make sure you're gonna get in there and do both sides for symmetrical reasons. Every side is gonna be different, but for our purposes here, I mean, we did one side just to show you, right? That's one of the things there. So we got the ankle done. Good, yep. So we'll move up into the hip. So when we were talking about your hips, we definitely, you know, we had a bit of a restriction on the left hip, externally and internally. Right? Yeah. So let's work on more of the posterior capsular side of this just to see if that actually improves both ranges of motion there. You didn't have any real discomfort on the inside of the hip and thigh. We can come back to that one if we need to do a, a different sort of uh, banded distraction there. But well, let's start with working on what's going on in the back side here. So we're talking about deep to the glutes. There's a, there's a group of six muscles that control the rotation of the hip. So that internal external rotation uh, and stabilize that hip much like the rotator cuff of the shoulder. So we want to address those first, okay? Sure. So I think, is the same band good for you? Do you want to go with a little heavier? Yeah, sure, you can go with some heavier here. A little heavier. When you're doing this too, make sure you got a good anchor point. I've seen a lot of stuff go down where it's like you hook it to a barbell rack. It's like one of those triangle ones. <laughs> Shit goes flying. You got to be careful. Watch out. We got a good anchor point. That's the number one thing here. So we're going to go uh, left. Yeah, hip. We'll do left one. Okay. Yep. Okay. So what about the band placement here? So the band placement here, uh, pretty important. We don't want this to be really uncomfortable. There's a lot of sensitive structures deep in up in the inner thigh. So with this band placement, it looks pretty good. It's un cutting underneath the gluteal fold. And then again, we just want to make sure it's comfortable for you on the inside of the inner thigh there. If you do get any sharp pains in there, if you're feeling that it's really, it almost feels like a pinch, um, back off. We're going to take tension on the band. We're going to sort of reset. Uh, maybe the band just kind of needs to be wiggled around a little bit. Sometimes the band will get pulled more in one direction, that rubber, and it will stick to you and that rubber will slide one way. So it'll create a little bit of a tension. So, we really want to be careful with how we're placing that. So just make it comfortable. It's going to be uncomfortable to a certain degree when you're in the full range of motion. That's okay. Pain is not the pain is not the good thing here. We don't want any pain while we're doing this. So when you say gluteal fold, that's pretty much the spot between your glutes and hamstrings. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Just right underneath them there. Yep. All right. So we're going to do this into external rotation. Okay. Right? So this leg is going to come forward into the left leg is going to come up with a little bit of a lateral. Yep. There we so go. Posterior we'll lateral, let's say. And then take that step forward from there. Let's see. Good. Doing okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And you've done this one once before for this hip as well. Yeah. Going yep. in this direction is good. Yep. Good. So from here. Good. So again, a couple keys. We're going to watch the posture on this, right? We're going to let him sort of move that knee out into that external rotated position, uh, much like he would when he's doing his squat. From here, there's a couple things we can do with the hands. He can put one hand on his foot just to stabilize the start. The other hand's going to reach towards the floor. This leg, as it extends, he's going to keep the back toe sort of internally rotated here so he can relax this foot. So he just sort of maybe like that. Good. And now from here, we can push down in through that stretch there. The band is pulling his his femur and his hip into that posterior lateral direction. He's flexing his um, spine over top of this, so we're getting a little bit of, uh, quite, a, quite a great deal of hip flexion going on here as he's getting that distraction. Do you feel any pain with that? Uh, just in the right hip flexion is a bit tight. In the right hip flexion? Yeah. So if that's the case, he could bring this knee forward a little bit and just bend it to give himself a little bit more, uh, some relief there. Do you feel any distraction going on back here? Do you feel a no pinching. Or tightness, no pinching no, or anything. No pinching. But do you feel anything happening? Do you feel anything, any movement in the tissue? Do you feel it's, it like it's, it's stretching to a certain it's degree? It's definitely stretching. I could probably go to the side more, I think. Yeah. There you go. Good. Yeah. That's perfect. 
So now would you do anything else with your hip in this position? You know, sometimes I'm going to take my hand on my knee here and just bring it to a slowly internal right. rotation. Yep. So when he does that, when he brings it from external back into neutral, maybe into a little bit of internal, this is, if this is the bone of the femur, he's rotating it and it's actually pushing posterior again. So he's getting more of the deep tissue of the hip there, the muscles, the ligaments that hold the capsule together. So he is mobilizing that posterior hip capsule quite a bit by moving that leg around. Again, in this position, if he can tolerate holding himself in this position, this is, you know, not the easiest position to be in for a long period of time. 15 to 20 repetitions uh, is a good starting point uh, for someone in this. And just a nice slow pulsing of movement back and forth. We don't want to hold it. We don't want to crank on it. Don't get your buddy to sit on your leg or push your knee or anything like that. This, these are just, these are self-therapeutic interventions. And as you can see, the foot stays flat, right? I'm not going up on a knife edge of a foot because that kind of takes away from me, right? Always maintain when you're doing these distractions for your ankle and hip, good base support with the foot, even a hand on here like for me, because it's going to be pulling, it's pulling significantly, right? But just keep my weight on here so I keep my foot stable. And then when I go into internal rotation, it's not going to be all that hard, so that's good. Great. All right. So yeah, normally we would, normally we would go to both sides. But just for the sake of time here, we'll just do one side. Sounds good. Right? Just yep. one side here. That sounds great. Okay, now the next one. This is yeah. one of yours. I haven't done this one. Done this one no, so I'll get you to pop the shoes off again, sure. actually. So, so now we're going to switch to one. Um, it's, it's kind of a combo. It's a, it's a really nice move. We'll set you up in just sort of the, uh, the, the position first, then we'll add the band to it afterwards. Yeah. Um, so when we assess the squat, um, Let's just have a look at his squat again. Feels really good, actually. It feels nice. <laughs> That's good. So let's actually check out your squat here again. So just from a side view, yeah, that'd be great. Good. Perfect. So I really like his squat position. His shins and his and his torso are fairly parallel. He's getting that hip joint down below the angle of the knee there, which is really nice. You know, he's got that upright posture. Um, we want to mimic this, and a lot of times we'll have patients that just can't get into this position, right? Come on back up. They'll go into a little bit more of a Superman. They'll do, they won't even necessarily do any hip hinging. They'll kind of just start to bend their knees and they'll end up in a squat position like this and then they feel like they're just gonna fall forward. So we want to get them into a perfect squat position, right? And totally unweighted, okay? So we're gonna have you lie on the mat, on the floor here. So you're gonna lie here. Oh God. Swing your legs, so have a seat over here. Swing your legs this way, face me. Easy way to get into this. Oh. So now what you're going to do is you're going to rotate, and as you do, your feet are going to go up the wall, and your bum is going to go as close to the wall as we can. Nice, easy position. We're going to roll up, and then you're going to be flat on your back. So bring your back more this way. Yep, come over here. There we go. And just, I just try to make, I'm trying to make this as safe as possible. For sure, yeah. You're going to lie with your feet going straight up the wall. Basically. Oh, there you go. Okay. So, we're going to now go into our squat position. Yeah. So as if he was just this perfect specimen of an Olympic squat, okay? He's going to slide his bum as close to the wall as he can, but maintaining that lumbar, that low back on the ground. So if he feels like his back is starting to curve off, so as the legs come down, now we're going to go into that hip external rotation position, right? So lots of times people will have that hip pinch when we do the hip test. They won't be able to, uh, to go into a squat when we do the squat test. And in this position, if you want to go to that side and then just take a shot, maybe turn the angle like that so you can see. Now, if I put him in an overhead squat position, you can just see. We're going to bring his feet down. Good. How do you feel? This left shoulder is definitely tighter. Yeah. That's for sure. Holy <laughs> so, so we'll take the shoulders out of it for yep. a second. We'll just do that. Good. So his squat position there, he looks pretty darn good. He could have a little bit more, you know, vertical shins here, but, or, well, it would be vertical if he was standing. So if this is down here, how does that feel for a full deep squat position? Feels really good. Do you ever squat this deep? Uh, you know what? Not with a no, no. <laughs> Not with a load, right? No. So this is a really good position. And I see a lot of people who just can't get into a squat position. When we put them on the floor, Totally unweighted, yeah. um, and then this is just a great, a great exercise for them to mobilize hips, mobilize uh, knees. The low back is not being stressed at all. 
their thoracic spine is not going into a curvature. Yeah. You know, they're not like Superman trying to do their squat, right? They're able to get those, basically what's happening is that hip hinge is going down and they're coming down into that squat position. So it's kind of nice, okay? Mm, yeah. All right, so from this position, we're gonna use a band now, okay? okay. And this is gonna be a, a hip band. Um, so you have to come out of that position probably a little bit. For sure. So nice and safe, straighten the legs, roll to the side is usually the easiest. And we'll go with the purple band. So you're gonna hook this around one knee. Okay. So actually you're probably gonna have to come up and sit. So this is gonna be a little harder to get into the position. So sit down here facing this way as if you're gonna go right into that squat position from a seated position. So this one's gonna go on your knee. Okay. Bend that knee, slide forward towards the wall. This is gonna go under your bum. Okay. Just make sure that one doesn't snap off. And this is gonna go over top of this knee. Great. And now you're gonna get into that squat again. So let's see where this is rigging. Look at this. You might want to move this down. You might want it more on your low back. There you go. Good. So now we're going to try and. This is hard to get into that position now. There you go. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Making them work. So you're going to keep coming forward, trying to eat your bum forward here. There you go. <laughs> it was caught me in the face. It's usually, <laughs> it's usually easier than this. That's yep. okay. First so, time. <laughs> so Never now he's going to go into that nice squat position again there. From here, a couple things that he might be feeling. He's going to be feeling probably some tension deep on the inner thigh here. Yep. These bands are really pulling his hip into external rotation. So we had him do the external rotation. Um, mobilization there, you're pulling it into internal, right? Yep. We're trying to get that posterior capsule. We're getting a little bit of the anterior capsule here, a little bit of the medial chain. You're probably feeling like we're stretching your groin and your hip flexor right yeah, now, okay? Yeah. So it's really opening that up, okay? So this is just a great, this is a more advanced band of distraction, yep. obviously, to get into that position and stuff. This is a pretty uh, significant band here too. But if you just relax there, I'm sure you feel those hips just gently sort of pulling back and oh, pulling yeah. up and relaxing. We can always add a little more. We can always just rest the arms, okay? And this is nice. And so what about the foot position? I feel like this this is yep. losing a bit of position here. For sure. So, you know, your feet could probably be a little bit wider. They could maybe come out a bit more, right? That would probably give you more foot contact yeah, with your wall, okay? So a little bit more flexion out of this knee potentially as well. Good. Not bad. It's good. And your low back is still feeling like it's, it's well, pretty firm on good, the floor yeah. there. So, this is just a great hip mobilization. And again, we're just in that total unweighted squat position. There's no stress on our spine right now. That, no. that thoracic spine doesn't feel like I'm trying to arch to stay upright, holding a weight on my shoulder or anything like that. This is just a great mobilization for that. Awesome. Um, this one obviously isn't like the other band of distractions. This is not a repetition thing. Mm -hmm. This is a get into this position, and I'm going to just relax and chill out in this position for a little bit. You know, to start with, 30 seconds to a minute. You know, you can work up to maybe four or five minutes in this position and just relax. We can start to work on some breathing techniques here as well, where we just do a little bit of belly breathing. Let those hips just sort of fall open on the exhale. Great. Perfect. That's good? Awesome. Yeah, that's okay. really good. So after these distractions, we should probably retest. Yes, yeah, sure. Right. So, so. When you come out of this one, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna do the outtakes of this one. No, we're good. There you go. Good. Awesome. That was a good one. That was a good one, eh? Yeah, that's good. All right. So let's go back and do your active and your that's passive uh, assessment here. So with the right one before, we always had a pretty pretty fair degree of internal rotation here and you're pretty good on the external. It's nice and even. And then let's try the left. So that looks really good. Let's do your external rotation here. Keep that thigh a little quieter right there. What do you feel? That's good. Feel any limitation anywhere? Can you like torquing your knee? No torquing the knee, but also this is much, much loose before I felt like, it wasn't a, it wasn't a pinch, but you feel like something's jamming up. Sure, sure. And, and actually, I can actually, I can hold that contraction more. Yeah. Because before I would come out and then it would come back in. Sure. Not bad. No, that's good. Good. Let's go back up onto your back and do that, that passive assessment in a different position. So, perfect. So relax this leg for me. We'll come up. And 
and we're going to go into an external rotation. And that's just super soft and yeah. nice hay. No problem there. And there's that internal. And this side wasn't much of a concern for us initially, so we'll come over to this side and let this leg relax for me. Good, let's see what that external, that's a great amount of external rotation. Does that bother you? No. Okay, don't make me a liar here. Relax this leg, good. We're going to go into internal. You're pulling, so just let it fall. Yeah, let it fall. Good, there we go. And there's our internal rotation. So now we have more internal rotation here. We're getting this soft end feel. Um, obviously, you can't feel it, I can. You can feel that nice bounce, yeah, though, right? So we want that nice soft end feel. If it's more of a firm end feel, particularly on an internal rotation, we're a little concerned maybe there's a joint pathology there. That soft end feel lets us know that we can get more, move, more mobility out of that hip without actually injuring the joint. So awesome. Good. Yeah. Nice. Sounds okay. No, that's really good. Should we retest your dorsiflexion? Yeah, let's retest that right. one. You've got the measuring stick here with the, the, old, the hand and the yeah, thumb. The old hand and thumb. Yeah, I think about five inches is what we did before, so that's the same yep. one right there. Yep. So we're getting pretty close. We're maybe two finger width away from the wall. That's certainly a little bit more forward than it looked like, so that's good. And there's also less pinching on this lateral side here. Good. Had a lot of sprains on this ankle. That's probably why I have a limited mobility through here. But yeah. before there was had a real deep pinching through here. Feels much better. Well, Moves better. Three fingers here, which yeah. it's good. It's good. Nice. Yep. So that's pretty much what we're going over today. So these tests, retests are important to figure out what you need to do on the day, right? Yeah. Doing the same walk over and over again, it's not going to be specific enough. And like the name of the series is meaningful movement, right? You have to warm up in meaningful ways. Like what's going on today? How can I address all the tightness and everything that's going on? So that's why we wanted to present this to you. Why do you do this? That's the big question. Why am I doing any of this, like anything? This is gonna give you the reason why you do things. Because sometimes you may be on point and you don't need to do so much of it. Other times, if you don't test and you're really tight, injury's gonna happen, right? For sure. It's yeah. building an awareness about what you're doing. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Dr. Holiday. My pleasure. Awesome. So yeah, we're gonna see us again next week. We're gonna come down here to the clinic again and we're gonna talk about some more great stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great Saturday, enjoy the long weekend, stay away from Jubilee, underpass is closed, traffic jams everywhere, don't get stressed out. Okay, thank you, all right? <laughs> See you later.